Welcome to the Starsology Astrology Podcast. I am your host, Alison Price, and I'm here with my co-host, Arwen O'Neill. Hi, Alison. It's great to be here. It's great to have you back again. We have so much fun on these podcasts. Absolutely. So this week, we're going to be talking about the part of fortune. Yes. Now, um, some of you obviously will know what it is. Others of you may have never heard of it before. But anyway, the part of fortune is actually a point in a chart. It's not a planet. It's a position on a chart which is calculated by the combination of your ascendant sun and moon positions. And I'm really not going to go into the final details about that. But there will be a link to my blog post below this podcast if you want to go on to the calculations. Because back in the day when I started with astrology, we had to do this all by hand. But now, fortunately for us, yes. Astro Gold will pull your part of fortune. And really, it's I think it's the only point, of, the only part that it will put in, even though there are multiple parts. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. I mean, and if you are just looking for a quick and dirty astro.com, if you go into the extended chart options, you can actually add all the different oh, points right. that you want. So you, okay. can, you can choose. It won't automatically add it, but you no. can choose to add it, which is the only reason that I know my part of fortune, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. So yeah. this is it. So, I mean, I use Astro, Astro Gold as a matter of on a daily basis. And of course, Solar Fire does it automatically. But there are multiple parts, and they're also known as Arabic lots. Mm. But you can have like the part of marriage and the part of divorce and the part of brothers and sisters and murder and God knows what. Yeah. But really, the part of fortune is the one that's in, it's in mainstream, I would say. And that's because it's displayed on the apps. Yes. Even if today we want to know where the part of marriage is, we have to go and get out the calculator and a pencil and start making the brain work right so that's why it's, it's slightly more complicated for sure okay so just a bit about the history of the arabic parts or lots uh they are constructed points as you said they're based on mathematical <laughs> mathematical calculations of the three horoscopic entities or planets angles you know the, the sun moon and, and rising mm. sign and the the lots are a very ancient astrological technique that can be traced back to pre-hellenistic sources so this is before the greeks this would originally have been Babylonian, Egyptian, Persian, Hermetic, ages and ages ago. Way so back, the way very, back. Very first astrologers. Yeah. And uh, they became established as as the Hel- Hellenistic astro- astrologers became um, you know more prevalent. Yeah. So one of the best sources that we have is from the sixth century, and this is from Olympiodorus the Younger. And, right. Uh, yes. There were about a dozen or so major lots for every for every chart. And, uh, and as you say, like the part of fortune was a big one, the lot of spirit, part of marriage, part of divorce, all of these. And back then, now we consider astrology to be a tool that we use to find out more about ourselves, find out about our personality, um, maybe help in determining how a relationship is going to go. Not in the sense of, will this relationship work? Will it end in divorce? Will it end in murder? Yes. <laughs> but how will I work with this person when we have a fight yes. or will we be good parents together? And and even less that more like, how will we parent together? Right. Not, is it going to work? Uh, but back then it was very much more deterministic, much more about, and, and because astrology was a tool of the royalty, it was a, a tool yes. of the Kings. It yes. was, it was about, will this person be good for the empire? Will this person be murdered in their sleep? Will this person be poisoned by their wife or mistress? And there were, believe it or not, there were actual astrological points that were used to determine these things because it was of critical life or death importance yes. to the uh, the empire. Yeah. And so every ruler back then employed an astrologer or many, yeah. and they would do all of these calculations to find out if this person was going to be good for the empire. If you know, a good ruler, a good, a good king. ruler. If, mm-hmm. if the the empire would would prosper under this person, yes. and if not, what to do about it? <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. Um, and obviously, uh, yeah. So that's not exactly how we do it these days. No. But there are some things that are still very much a part of the current type of interpretation, and the part of fortune is one of those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's as I say. It's, the, it's I think it's the one that's come through. It's the one that um, you can actually just tap the computer and it will come up for you yeah. and um, of course you can work it out yourself if you want to but the point being that it does hinge on your birth time so yeah. if your birth time is weak or you're not sure within half an hour you may not be able to use a part of fortune it's yeah. one of those things yeah. but um in general uh, you and i and most people we know have a good birth time so they're going to be able to know where their part of fortune is yes that's a really good way to start out yeah yeah for sure 
And I think in general that the um, the meaning of the part of fortune is it, because it's a point in your chart, not a planet, it is therefore reactive to connections to it rather than generating um, activity which planets would tend to do with Absolutely. their energy. Yeah. So if wherever your part of fortune sits within your chart or aspects to it will influence how you can tap into this fortune. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, we're going to have a look at some of the placements for the house of fortune and what we what you're actually looking for when you're actually considering what is the part of fortune anyway yeah. mm -hmm. and it's interesting there's a one one of the astrology programs that i was very fond of unfortunately it's not on my mac but it is on my <laughs> very old uh, pc laptop and it's called uh, janus and it's yes it actually calculates a bunch of the parts a mm -hmm. bunch of the the arabic parts lots whatever you want to say yeah um, you can add in as many as you want yeah and the way that you can actually see what's important is it ranks them by how many connections it has in your chart. So, you know, some people may only have like three or four that have very tight aspects to yes. their personal planets or their the, conjunctions, really. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Conjunctions to the planets or to the ascendant MC, whatever. Yeah. And then some people may have like 10 or 20. And those are very interesting to read. They read like a little story because, as you say, they're very specific. Uh, there is a part of murder. <laughs> there, yes. is, there is a part of divorce. And... For a typical reader these days, that might actually kind of be a little alarming. And if you're a Gemini, that might be terrifying. And you might just be like, yeah. nope, <laughs> nope, right yeah. out of that, no. But, it, you know, if you're attracted to kind of like the darker, more interesting kind of like historical side of it, yes. they can be fascinating. And obviously take it with a grain of salt, whatever. But there is some really interesting stuff that can be found in these parts uh, and the interpretations thereof. That's right. That's yeah. right. So uh, generally, when I'm starting to look at the interpretations for the part of fortune, the two main things is to, going to be which sign is it in and therefore which planet disposes it. Yeah. So I think in your particular case, perhaps you could share with us where your part of fortune yes, is. It is at 10 degrees Scorpio in yeah. my first house. So then Mars is your your disposer of that yeah. uh, position as well. And interestingly, the only aspect it makes in my entire chart is that it is opposite Mars, yes. which is in my seventh house. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the, the, that is then straight off, there's a theme there with young men and what have you, and obviously your guy and so on. <laughs> and um, yeah, I know. It's, I have a guy. <laughs> you, fortunately for you, you do. Yeah. And um, and then, it, you know, in my case, I've got the part of Fort Union in Taurus on the 10th. So Venus is then the dispositive there. And therefore, hopefully, it should be a good thing because you like Venus. Yeah. But the point is that you're looking to see which... Uh, planet disposes your part of fortune, which sign is it in? That would be the first thing you want to, your first criteria you want to look at. And then the second thing really is, are there any conjunctions to this part of fortune? And a conjunction is within eight degrees. Mm -hmm. And if not, are there any major Ptolemaic aspects to it? Yeah. Because you want to see, the question really is, how is this part of fortune functioning within this chart? And does it have much say, or is it really just a, a quiet note going on in the background? So it does depend on the sign, on the house, and on the connections it makes into your chart. Yeah. And, of course, the part of fortune, because even if you're born on the same day as somebody else, you're going to have a different part of fortune because the ascendant is moving. Yeah. So you really do need, as I said, a good time for this. But, um, yeah, so, of course, therefore, the transiting part of fortune is moving as we speak. But once you've got one nailed in your birth chart, uh, we know where it is. So we can have a closer look and say, oh, how's this part of fortune for you? Yes. Absolutely. Now, back in the day when you were considering your part of fortune, people would want to say, well, has he got a good army? Is he fortunate to have the army? Is he fortunate to have a stable full of horses? Right. And in these days, in the, in the 2020s, the real question, it often very frequently comes down to, has he got money? Is he wealthy? What is your fortune? Yeah. Now, I agree that although the money is not everything and you can be fortunate to have a loving family and a nice home and a lovely dog and this and that, in general... Um, these days, the part of fortune does seem to align very much with wealth and wealth management. Yeah. So these are one of the questions you often get when you're looking at vocational and career based questions. Yeah. Sometimes people will say, will I be a millionaire? And of course, you want to be looking at the part of fortune for these questions. And yeah. um, let's get real. This is where we're going to go with these things. Right, exactly. And it's so much more fluid now because yes. obviously if you were born into wealth in the, in the past, in the deep past especially, you tended to stay that way uh, unless your empire was overthrown, in which case yes. you'd look for the, the lot of overthrowing. Yes. <laughs> There's probably one of those. This is um, it, and unborn children and all these right. terrible things. Right? Yeah, but now it's, it's, it's all about do you have the brains to your own fortune?
character. Yeah. Kind of thing. And really, I think I want to say as well, the way I look at it is, where will you? Where are you going to be fortunate in this lifetime? Right. And how can you tap into the fortune that is shown in your chart? Exactly. So we would do this by two things. One is going to be looking at the aspects, which we're just, just going to mention. And the other way will be to consider which house is your part of fortune in. Mm-hmm. And um, I'd like to go over a few points that I've got a bit of a list here. Yeah. And I'd like to share that with you. Sounds amazing. Okay. Okay. So when we're looking at the part of fortune in the houses, we're going to look at the first house first. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, oh, and this is you. So it's you're me. up first. Woohoo. So when the part of fortune is in the first house, uh, this placement suggests that your fortune comes through your own personal charisma mm. and in the strength of your personality. It also shows that your face is your fortune, therefore what you look like, and it's important for you to look your best at all times. Wow. All right. <laughs> so, so we're going to go with that. And we're going to say that your, um, your face is your fortune, and it is who you look at that tends to make you fortunate. We did say that yours is in Scorpio, therefore it's disposed by Mars, and you've got the opposition, which is to seven. So this has to indicate your young man. Yes, I love it. And um, so I, let me ask you then, did you feel that your life became more fortunate when you met him? Were you fortunate to meet him? Has your life improved since you knew him? Oh, my goodness. There's only one answer, isn't there? You're going to make me cry. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. Yes. Uh, it's actually hilarious because there's one of the horoscopes I remember vividly from coming out of I think it was 2005. So I had recently come out of sort of the chaos of losing a job, losing an apartment, scrambling my way back up in a, into you know, uh, stability financially. And throughout all of this, my partner and I, who I'm still with, were just super connected. It was the one thing that was working in my life when everything else was just falling to pieces around me. And there was a horoscope that I read. It was like an annual horoscope. I honestly don't remember what site it was on. But it said something about you, me, uh, found the root of your of, of importance in your life and you attached yourself to that and you clung to it with all of, all of the fierceness of your of your soul. And that has what's that's been what's carried you through the tsunamis of difficulty that are now ebbing in your life. And I burst into tears when I read that because right. I knew that it meant my relationship. And yes. And that is absolutely how I think of it. And uh, and that's amazing that that is... Uh... It's usually dynamic. I see he's a Scorpio, I believe, as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. He's... Yeah, so we're, we're tapping into all of these. And of course, it could have been anything, but it just happens to have been uh, focused. The focus there is for your part of fortune on the Mars and it's in the seventh house relationship thing. Yeah. So we have to lean towards that. 100%. And yeah. his son is in, in Scorpio, as you say, conjunct my ascendant like within minutes. Right. So it's it couldn't be more conjunct. It's, it's so interesting. It's so yeah. interesting how this is just pretty straightforward. So yeah. even though we, we've just said that your part of fortune tends to be money, which yeah. may not be the case in this case. However, the, the fact that you have him yeah. is the fortunate thing in your life and yeah. you can cling to that. It's not, as I say, it's not a planet, but it's one of those delicate points within a chart, sensitive yeah. points that is triggered clearly and yours has been with this, with this relationship you yeah, have. Absolutely. This meaningful, long standing that has got you through thick and thin clearly yeah, in, in your life, which is great. Yeah. And I mean, we can easily say that we have saved each other's lives at, at certain wow. points. At, that's I powerful. I don't know that everyone can say that or that yeah. everyone would want to say that. But as powerful. you know, as Scorpios with very strong Pluto placements, that means everything to us. Amazing. You know? <laughs> so that's a great. So that is, a, yeah. that is so I'm so happy that we have this perfect example of the yeah, of fortune of the first <laughs> All right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, let's have a look. If you've got the part of fortune in your second house, mm. this indicates that finances and acquisitions will be fortunate for you. Mm-hmm. Things like your art collections and anything that you treasure or collect, all your knickknacks and your serious collections. And they say if you have three or more of one item, you have a collection. <laughs> so that is the definition. That's all it takes. <laughs> yeah, that's all it takes, three. And uh, money in general will flow your way because the second house is money, is possessions, and it's a great placement for financial fortune. Yeah. So, again, you would want to look at the actual um planet that rules the sign and any tight aspects to that uh, part of fortune yeah Yeah. all right so let's move on and let's have a look at the part of fortune in your third house Um, and this shows that your fortune will come through your siblings or brothers and sisters or anyone in your family of the same generation of you like your cousins Mm -hmm. so this is this is your connection it can also come through school through the school through your teachers through learning 
books or reading or writing or anything intellectual on that level. Mm -hmm. And also it will come by means of your community. Right, because the third house is also your local community. That's right, your neighbors and any local environment activities that you do. So you will be fortunate perhaps to live where you do and to have the people around you that that you have. Mm -hmm. Um, And that would then be considered your fortune. And again, you're looking at the the sign ruler and also any aspects to it. But we're looking at the houses in general. Yeah. Yeah. Then if we look at the, if you have the part of fortune in your fourth house, this shows that you may have come from a fortunate family Mm -hmm. and one which may be wealthy. And it very often is the case that you you basically marry, you're born into money, you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth because you're part of fortune, sir. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to be money. It could actually just be that you, your, your family situation was very fortunate in a different way. So it doesn't yes. necessarily mean that you were born rich. It just could be that your family gave you the, the stable upbringing or the, you know, the environment that nurtured you in exactly the way you needed to be. That's right. So that's it's, right. You were fortunate in your yeah. way you where you were born into this world. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You were likely to have a good childhood and the conditions of your early environment will likely set you up for life. So, yeah. Yeah. and of course these things can be just taken for granted. So just pay yeah. attention to these positions as well. Yeah. Totally. All right. So let's move on. So, So if the part of fortune is in your fifth house, it suggests that your fortune will come through your uh, through speculation, perhaps as trading or stock exchange for sure, because that is definitely the house of the stock exchange. But it could also come through basic casino wins and lottery wins. Mm -hmm. And um, this is one sign of a lottery winner, although there needs to be many more positions within the chart to support this, because not everybody who's got the part of fortune in the fifth house will win the lottery. Otherwise, that'd be one in 12 of us. And it's not the case already. Uh, but you can also be fortunate through your children and by them doing well in life you will benefit because your children did well yeah so there's that too they may i don't know become a doctor or something and marry well or whatever it is mm-hmm. and you benefit by that and, and um that's also the house of the arts absolutely yeah yeah so your fortune can also come through your creative endeavors and through things you give birth to right. um, like your crafts your music or your arts 100%. that you can be a creative person and you are fortunate in that way. Right. So this is this is a good thing. So fifth house is not only the children that you have that are born from you, but it's it's projects you give birth to. Yeah. Which is so if you're a musician or an artist, as you said, yeah. The, these this is where your fortune can come. Yeah. So it's actually it's a I love the fifth house. It's a great yeah. house to have oh, stuff yeah, in. Totally. Definitely. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look if the part of fortune is in your sixth house. And this indicates that your fortune will come through daily activities and your work. Mm -hmm. It also suggests that your job can be very lucrative, even if it's in a service industry. So you do very well there. And um, you can also be fortunate through your pets, perhaps as a breeder or as a vet or something. And also through small plants, garden centers, herbs. Any any plants shorter than a goat, that's yeah. the definition of that. <laughs> so um, anything like that. And your daily rituals and daily habits. Yeah. So if you're one of these habit people, this could be where you, oh, yeah. you become fortunate through. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So if the part of fortune is in your seventh house, this indicates that your fortune will come through your partnerships. And this is usually means marriage or common law partnerships. This is really what it means. That you marry well, you marry up, you marry mm. the perfect guy or perfect woman or the perfect person. And um, this is also indicates that your husband or wife is likely to be better off than you are mm. because you're moving up the social ladder when you do the marriage here. Right. Um, but business partnerships as well be of great benefit and you need to consider them often. So even if, you, if you've got the part of fortune in the seventh house and you're perhaps married to some person, if you go into a business partnership, you will be fortunate if you do so. And more than one, you don't need to just limit yourself to one business partnership when you've got the part of fortune in the seventh house. So that's kind of a good thing, right? Absolutely. And this is another reason why it's just so important to know these things. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like to know that your partnerships are going to be the most important thing to nurture and to nurture in your life. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. To be very careful about the the choices that you make when you go into a partnership with someone. That's right. It's, 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 as I say, it's a subtle thing, but Mm -hmm. um, astrologically it's something to definitely pay attention to. Yeah. So now if the part of fortune is in your eighth house, Um, This indicates that your fortune will come through inheritances, insurances and annuities. So anything like that where you are likely to inherit. And, you know, many people do inherit from their parents, but some will receive more than others. 
Um, but you will also gain through uh, tax avoidance and perhaps um, tax loopholes and being scrupulous with your tax affairs, you're likely to, return, to receive tax rebates as well because of your scrupulousness almost. And you can gain much through your partner's investments because, of course, the eighth house is the money from your partner. So they invest well, they buy a nice house, you benefit from that and your fortune will come through the association you have with that seventh house partner. Right. So if your part of fortune is in your ninth house, this suggests that your fortune lies in another land and that you have to travel to gain your fortune. Hmm. Mm. Um, however, this can be shown closer to home in being involved with international things and people. Uh, you could be fortunate in publishing because that is the only house that's actually got a, a, a business publishing in it. Uh, you can also be publishing through the church or the religion will favor you. So hopefully you're looked on well when you get up to the pearly gates. <laughs> and um, you're fortunate because of your philosophies in some way, perhaps, they're coming through. And also you might be fortunate to have a good, a good education in the first place, that you were born into a family where they did provide you right. with a good education and that established you yes. to move on to and great still things. education as an important value for yes, you. Yes, exactly. Interesting. One person I know, and I just happened to come across this yeah. as I was... As we were talking about this, one person I know who has the um, part of fortune in the ninth house has moved from his native country, which was Canada, to the U.S., and he is a long-distance truck driver. So foreign yeah. lands travel. Um, he's also very <laughs> philosophical. He's he's always reading. He's very interested in sort of existential movies and these kinds of things, and uh, he's a very intellectual kind of person. It gives him a lot of time to think. And a lot of time wow. to listen to audiobooks and uh, and to sort of you know Expand be with his, his own mind. thoughts. It's almost like he's kind of a, a monk on the road driving a truck and delivering wow. the goods that we appreciate. It just shows you, yeah. Because as I say, these are subtle things. Because you may not have any planets in your ninth house, yeah. But if your part of fortune is there, it's going to come through. Yeah, yeah. This is the benefit of this. Uh, why why you want to look at these things? Yeah. And again, it's not the first thing you're going to look at in a chart. No, it's something you're going to look at afterwards to, to polish up your readings. Totally. Okay, so the part of fortune in the 10th house, and I'll put my hand up to this one. This indicates that you will be fortunate in the public eye, either through your chosen career or perhaps in politics in some form. Well, I'm not political whatsoever, but I am quite happy to put myself out there. Hence the podcast. And your reputation will be good and will benefit you even through challenging times. We hope so. And you may be fortunate to be well-known, famous, and have massive public status. Well, I'm still waiting for that. But to be um, have this part of fortune in the 10th house, I've got no planets up there whatsoever. So once I, I feel that once I actually started to focus on this entrepreneurial journey that I'm on and yeah. putting things together and all the and creating this podcast and doing all the things I've been doing, that it has benefited me. Yeah. And um, I am fortunate to be doing it and I enjoy doing it and uh, hopefully we'll continue. Yeah, yeah. definitely. All right. Um, so let's have a look now at the part of fortune in the 11th house. So this placement indicates that you will be fortunate through your associations with others, either in causes or in groups. Mm -hmm. Basically, your friends and the people you know, your associates and so on. And you may have friends that provide support financially and are generous on your behalf, which is a good thing. Yeah. And then also you can benefit through the people you know. Yeah. So this is someone who knows people, who knows people, who knows people, mm -hmm. and they give him a leg up. They give him an introduction in, mm -hmm. and therefore he is fortunate to know these people. Or he knows a load of, you know, a load of wealthy people that they buy lunch and they say, oh, let me pay your rent, my dear, you know, or something like that. We right. live in hope. Yeah. And then if you have the part of fortune in your 12th house... Uh, this indicates that you can benefit through institutions like hospitals, libraries, museums, galleries, prisons, or zoos, and in any area where things are collected, curated, and kept. Hmm. Would a university um, count as, as, as an institution? Well, the university library would and the yeah. university museum would. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. It's where pe where things are curated and kept, like yeah. zoos and prisons and so yeah, on. Yeah. Art galleries, for instance, are definitely... Uh, Twelfth house stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Why do you ask? Oh, my mother has the uh, right fortune in the twelfth house. It's, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can be fortunate in your private life, which is very private as well. Yeah. 
And where your fortune does arrive, you're likely to keep quiet about it and tell no one. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you may consider yourself fortunate if you give it all away as an act of sacrifice. Yeah. Or if you surrender the money to others in charitable ways, there is the urge with this 12th house financial bonuses to give it back, a religious, spiritual give Interesting. back. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, but you may also squander any fortune that comes your way because that is the house of your self undoing. Right. So there's a there's a delicate line between your self undoing and what you're doing to yourself and then your perhaps your spiritual awareness saying, right. oh, I need to give money to the ashram or something. Right. And you may decide so to do that. It's a fine line between self undoing yes. and renunciation. <laughs> exactly. That is yeah. exactly what I'm thinking of. Yeah. But in general, you, you know, you, you will benefit through associations with these institutions yeah you know interesting so it's i don't know i think it's a, i think it's a very interesting point in a chart mm-hmm. again it's not the first thing you look at but if you're wanting to consider if you're a consulting astrologer and people saying hey what about my job what about my career where's my life going yeah. you want to be tapping into that part of fortune and seeing which which sign is it in which house is it in for sure yeah. how are you how is fortune likely to be brought for this person it's not necessarily going to be financial but they will feel fortunate in the nature of that house yeah so this is something that needs to be brought forward and yeah you know that's a really great way of putting it too because it's not all just about money it is no. as as you say it's what you feel fortunate mm. you know it's as you say it's what you feel fortunate about so for yes yeah yeah so what do you feel way. fortunate about coming back you definitely I mean, but yeah. you met him, right? You found your soulmate. I feel absolutely, yeah, exactly. I feel incredibly fortunate to have found my soulmate. And, you know, not like now, like 25 years ago. So we have like a good yeah. long time Solid. together. Um, and I feel incredibly fortunate about, honestly, my health, my well-being, you your, know. the Your physical. my Yeah, the fact that I. Vitality. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it is work, obviously, at my age, it's not like an accident if I, if I'm in good health and, and physically fit. But an Armin is physically fit. Yeah, I mean, thank she's, you. <laughs> she's uh, rollerblading the seawall and wow. Biking, walking, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But yeah, the fact that I found things that I enjoy doing, that it's not just a slog. It's not just a, oh, I go to the gym and I hate it, you know. Um, yes. I found things that I enjoy doing that keep me healthy and that with any luck will like can to contribute to my longevity exactly um, and that's first steps as well your physical body yeah, yeah exactly incredibly important and um yeah so i feel very fortunate about that for sure that is great yeah yeah, yeah. that is great yeah. yeah how do you feel um yeah i feel that i have to focus more on that part of fortune it yeah. does i do see it as the career public whatever it's to do with definitely this podcast and yeah. YouTube channel prior to and but for many book, years book publishing <laughs> yes my yeah. book publishing but for many years of my life most of my life was spent bringing up my four children yeah. and it's only in the last probably five years that I have been able to specifically focus on how I want to direct what it the work I'm trying to achieve here yeah Whereas previously, as a general astrologer, I was thinking, oh, I need to read three charts a day and therefore this and that and blah, blah, blah. And now I realize that really doesn't interest me. What I what interests me about it is inspiring other people to tap into astrology yeah. and not necessarily become astrologers, but lean on astrology to take what interests them, be it music, art or reading or writing, forward and be the best person they are. So that is yeah. how I'm trying to use this energy and put that forward. Being and a, that, that's that been a shift. In being that a last, mentor, being an yeah. inspiration. Yeah, I suppose so. And that's been the shift of the last, um, probably the last, since the last five years, I would say that I've actually zoomed in on what is it really I want to be doing rather than thinking, yeah. oh, I need to be an astrologer and I need to do these readings and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And it's not that. It's more about helping others just understand a little bit more about their lives so that they can live a better life. And that's what I want to do. So. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of the thrust. So, and here we are doing a podcast, right? I mean, it, yeah. it's amazing. And people are saying, you're doing a what? I'm saying, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. going public. Yes. Yes, exactly. Hmm. Okay. 
So, Arwen, we've gone through all the houses. Do you have any final thoughts on the part of fortune at this stage? Sure. And and it's it's interesting. To be honest, I hadn't actually thought much about the part of fortune before this talk. Exactly. And I saw it on our schedule, and I was like, oh, no, I must research this. What? <laughs> oh, I love it. Where's my part of fortune? Well, let, me, let, let, me, tell, let me tell our listeners. I put the <laughs> schedule out, and it just goes to Arwen's phone. And she says, oh, we're talking about that. Okay, then. Yeah, usually I give myself, a, you know, more than a week, but sometimes it's a couple of days. And yeah, we're digging deep. Yeah. yeah, but no, but like the interesting thing for me about the part of fortune is that it is, as as we touched on at the beginning, it is one of these vestiges, and, and it's an important vestige of a sort of a, a, a more historical, ancient, ancient. dare we say, yeah. um, aspect of astrology. And it's, it's from a, a time where the deterministic sort of life or death kind of things about astrology were, were what people would come to an astrologer to find out, am I going to die in a flood yes. <laughs> or will my marriage last so that I can have my kids take over my company, my business, right. my farm, whatever. These were the important things. You can't die without an heir. These days, that's who thinks about yeah. with only Elon Musk thinks about dying without an heir. And he that's doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Um, but <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so it, it's really interesting that this is one of these these sort of ancient aspects that have come for us down through the ages that we can kind of use in a modern way and to say yes. like what where do we feel fortunate in our chart? And it's not it's not we don't have to use it in a deterministic way and mm-hmm. say like oh I'll never be wealthy because it's not in my whatever house. It's more about like where do I feel fortunate? How can I use that? Yes. Yeah. How can I tap into this aspect of my chart? Yeah. It's subtle, yeah. um, but once you kind of zoom in on it and give it a bit of focus, yeah. you you can walk towards it. And I feel that's that's how it's been for me, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting, great. Yeah. All right, well, this has been great. It's um, I think this is the we, we, this again will be another topic that we're going to revisit in the future. It's one of those things that the points are always subtle; they're not planets, so mm-hmm. you, so you want to. Um, you know, what to be to paying attention, but it's not it's not that most important thing, but it's certainly yeah. something to think about. And this is what I'm hoping with this podcast that we are able to give our listeners something to think about is as you go about your work week um, ahead of you, that yeah. you can consider how do you feel fortunate and when you look at your part of fortune, what are the what is the sign, what are the astral conjunctions, what are the planets making aspects to it, yeah. and um, how can you how can you see this being expressed in your life? Absolutely. And you're the kind of person who is more interested in the sort of deterministic ancient parts of fortune and parts of divorce or, or you know, these yeah. types of things. Like you can absolutely find that. It's, it's, you can dig deep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's a little bit of, there's something for everybody. I in, think so. In this. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I think we'll leave it on that very positive note. Yeah. Well, Arwen, thank you so much once more for being here. It's always a pleasure. Yes, definitely. Thank you for uh, for inviting me. Oh, no problem. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for getting this far through the episode. I just want to take a moment to tell you about the two main options of my astrology services. So the first one is coaching. If you are an aspiring astrologer, and by that I mean someone who's perhaps a hobbyist astrologer or someone who's learning astrology or a student, or you've got a few books and you've been doing it for a while, but perhaps you need a little bit of help to bring it all together, then maybe getting some astrological coaching from me would be the answer for you. The astrology coaching I offer is a one-hour session on Zoom, and it's tailored to answer your particular questions. For example, if you have issues with natal chart readings, we can go there. Or if you're having problems working with your forecasting, we can go there. Or even basic astrology stuff, or even getting yourself organized for your astrology business. The idea is that astrological coaching will answer your particular questions. It's tailored specifically to you and where you are in your astrological journey. And I'm happy to help you out with some guidance about how you can get going, what to focus on and what to dismiss. So that would be the astrological coaching for people trying to learn astrology. The second astrological service I offer is consultations. So this is for someone who perhaps doesn't know anything about astrology, but they just want to have their chart read or get their chart done. Call it what you will. 
So once more, this is a one-hour consultation over Zoom. I will interpret your chart, tell you about the main features, tell you about where the energy is flowing, and all the rest of what is entailed in a thorough natal chart interpretation. I can also add in some forecasting in there too, bearing in mind we only have one hour. So just in summary, I've got coaching for people who want to learn astrology, and I've got uh, consultations for those who want to get an astrology reading done. I'm Alison Price from Starsology.com. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.